good afternoon to all of you i am uh, prof sindhi karnathilaka i am the president of the sri lanka medical association and uh, on behalf of the sri lanka medical association i welcome all of you uh, for the weekly webinar series of dslma under the theme of breaking the chain of transmission through community empowerment and today we are going to discuss a very important topic that is very relevant to our country and to our education because now all of us are moving towards slowly reopening the country and education is one aspect that is very important so today we will be discussing what is the future of the education especially the school education in this era of new normalcy since the new normal that we are talking about we are the country and the whole world have to adapt and this new normal with different opportunities how the education can adapt and then flourish so that would be the objective of today's discussion which is going to be very very important related to policy making as well as decision making and today we have i'm joined with uh, my group of moderators from the ministry of education we have uh, dr madhura vehella who is the additional secretary of planning from the ministry of education then uh, we have dr sajit edir singh a lecturer from the university of sri jawardhanapura again uh, supporting me in moderating and uh, we have a excellent panel of resource persons who are representing a wide range of disciplines and areas related to education that including the higher education school education the ministry of education and the mass media and electronic media as well so i'm sure we are going to have an excellent discussion and uh, the honorable minister and the secretary will also will be joining us through the messages that have been sent to us so without further ado let's move into this very important discussion since the time is very limited the plan is that generally we are going to have an interactive discussion and the presentations will be very limited because we want to discuss the opportunities for student centered learning mainly and how we can implement student centered learning during this era of new normalcy using the resources available so uh, let me introduce my co moderators dr madhura vehal and dr sajit dr madhura over to you yes uh, thank you dr karuna tilaka dr indika uh, actually we are very happy to have this webinar uh, and we have been able to invite uh, 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 most of the officials of the education service from the peripheral offices as well and also the central agencies uh, actually thanks to the sri lanka medical association uh, and also uh, being linked through uh, professor rasnayaka mudiyanse since he is working with us at the moment we are we were very happily actually organized this webinar and i think it's the right moment to discuss not only about uh, how to adopt uh, the education system to the new normalcy but also how uh, the education system can contribute to uh, the uh, future of the sri lanka as a i mean nation uh, how uh, this this actually this period gave us all uh, a period for thinking and we have been we have been actually uh, imagining and we have been doing our reflections and because of these reasons actually even the adults as adults the teachers and the principals and also almost all the adults who are in the government services as well as in the other fields can actually share these thoughts with their children with the children uh, uh, to uh, you know uh, as to change their mindsets to think of the life uh, to to think of their contributions to the country while uh, catching up the learning so this is a good time and i think it's a high time to have these kind of discussions as well uh, because uh, at the uh, you know the very uh, you know the very challenge before us at the moment is how to reopen the school and how the children uh, can be uh, you know got back to the schools and uh, how they will respond to learning at the first phase i mean during the first few days of the school so the teachers also has a good have a good i mean big, big challenge of you know uh, uh, you know uh, uh, making you know helping the children to get you know familiarized back uh, uh, to the school life sometimes with the with the the 
a certain kind of you know the restricted you know behaviors and you know disciplined behavior set of behaviors uh, with those social distancing as etc uh, into education so this is the, this is a good time and we have been able to uh, invite uh, several uh, you know veteran uh, educationists as well as uh, professionals uh, to talk to the colleagues at this uh, during this webinar so thank you very much and i think over to you dr indika uh, thank you uh, dr sajit uh, we'll start with the message from the minister because it's very important in decision making dr sajit uh, can you start with uh, dr pamod with the message good afternoon everybody it is true that the covid-19 period has created direct and indirect disruptions in the education systems but remember every dark cloud has a silver lining we could assume that this is a disguised opportunity for us to mark a turning point in the education system good health both mental and physical should come first and the final product of the education system should be a young generation benefit to face and overcome unforeseen future challenges i hope this discussion will help educationists over the country to refresh their thinking and practices in education development i would like to give my best wishes for a fruitful discussion also special thanks goes to slma for their interventions and thank you all for your participation thank you thank you honorable minister for those very valuable words of wisdom that's the very idea of this discussion because even though this is taken as a as a challenge for the country now since we have to move into the new norm or the new normal situation i think we have to take the best out of this situation and there will be a lot of opportunities where we can change our education in a better way towards more student centered learning using the available facilities let's move into the next part of the discussion uh, we have professor asnayaka mudiyase with us who is the vice president of the sri lanka medical association and also he is a professor in pediatrics uh, from the university of peradeniya and he has a lot of experience and interest related to improving education and uh, uh, he is in the presidential task force related to education as well or to you, professor mudiyase thank you dr So we can see you uh you right can start your presentation can you hear me um yes we can hear you all right okay uh, i'm trying to open my presentation yes uh, as honorable minister uh, mentioned it is very important for us to understand that the covid pandemic has not only created a stress on us given us a challenge to solve so that's covid pandemic has taught us many lessons but at the same time uh, it reiterated the need for a value of holistic education to create citizens not only with knowledge and skills but also good character wisdom and to create responsible citizens so therefore uh, when we are handling this situation it's not only a matter of thinking how can we overcome this and how can we teach our old syllabus once again uh, by some means we need to think of change the change is the one that is going to be very important here now changing 
in fact education is a process of change in behavior that we all understand and that is why uh, nelson mandela says that adhyapane loke vinas krimata bala bavita kala haki prabala maavya kiya so as a medical person i need to look at health and link this because now covid has created a health issue and along with that we have a issue of education now this is the definition i like about health health is a lifelong process of moving towards enhancing best possible physical intellectual emotional social spiritual environmental well being as an individual and in the community now this is very important now here you can see that health is defined as a environmental health it is important you have to uh, you have to improve your health not only as an individual but as a community now what is important because now we will not be able to manage covid or for that matter influenza or for that matter dengue unless you are sensitive about the environment it's not only just personal thing it also of the entire society so i think this is very important now it's because of this definition i think we need to think of expanding the horizon of teaching and learning to a, a different uh, prospect different scope wider spectrum so we need to have knowledge emotional social spiritual and environmental well be i think what is very important for us to respect our students and we need to teach them how to think rather than what to think i have lost the screen have i uh, that's okay we will just go ahead then uh, i don't see the screen so that's okay let's go ahead with the presentation that's right yeah uh, uh yeah it's it's fine now okay right okay so with all this wisdom i think we need to think of more wider spectrum of teaching it's not only the this is something that i feel the education framework for sri lanka just imagine the value of communication value of collaboration value of creativity and compassion and connectivity all that become important in the management of a, a situation like covid so i have the same thing in singhala ape ape nirmana sheli අපේ සංවේදන හැකියාවන් තියෙන්නේ නැති නම් අපට කොවිඩ් වාගේ වසංගත අවස්ථාවක නැවතත් නැගී සිටින්නට හම්බ වෙන්න හැකි තියෙන නිසා අපි දැනටම අපි උත්සාහ කරලා බලන්නට ඕනේ අපි වෙනස් වෙන්නට අපේ වෙනස් වීම තුල ළමයින්ට පරිපූර්ණ වූ අධ්‍යාපනයක් ලබා දීම තුලින් වඩා හොඳ සමාජයක් බිහි කරන්නට අධ්‍යාපනය අපි පෙළගස්වන්නට අවශ්‍යයි මේ පෙළගැස්වීම සඳහා අවස්ථාව තමයි අපට උදා වෙලා තියෙන්නේ මම ඒ දෙයම දෙමළ භාෂාවෙන් ලියලා තියෙනවා මට මේ කියන්න නම් බැහැ ඒ දෙමළ වචන වලින් thank you uh, kumarendran for helping me doing this process now education does not stop in school adhyapanaya demopian tat demo daruwan rakabala ganime krama veda tulatat permeate wenawa e demopio rakabala ganna kramaya ithamathma kadin bala pana i think me me avasthawe di api hitannata awashyai we need to think of education and education is have a responsibility on guiding our parents how to do this and and we should sort of uh, join with them to improve a better child rearing practices so that we can infuse inculcate those good habits that we are talking in the previous slide and then we should understand that education is is just a process it's a continuum starting from birth to the end of our life it continues start with parents it start with other healthcare workers and the school i think we all must be thinking on the same line to create that holistic child with multiple competencies so that they are resilient they can manage when they are in a in a problem situation so uh, this not, not only they are nutrition you need to provide this them responsive care and look after their security and safety and then create opportunities for them to learn and then ensure good health so they are for education and health are 
very much linked together and education should progress simultaneously. I like this statement by great philosopher Socrates. I cannot teach anything to everybody. I can make them think. I think we need to, we need to let our students think and we ourselves. So I am just trying to end my brief uh, idea. I think yet another important aspect we are not giving adequate emphasis is that we do not recognize the good qualities and the uh, competencies of our children and we do not make use of those competencies for the progress. So we need to think of appreciative approach in uh, education. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is that yes, we have to modify our learning and teaching system to create children who are capable of managing a difficult situation like COVID. It's not only the knowledge, not, not only the content, but also wider spectrum of competencies, character qualities, and the wisdom. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Mudiyansi. I think it's very important. Mehdi Godak Saka Chakra, Itamatma Vadega de Akama Shisha Pade Kadia Pai Koma de Umu in the Kinek. What a thing. Methi and Avastavi Apita may humble Athi and Avastavi Apita Shisha Pade Kadia Pai to win the Sidda Villa. Let me Avastav Mangtane, Koma the Progenitor Gandakinek, Itamatma Vadega. Now I'll hand over to uh, Dr. Madura Vihel again. Uh, uh, shall we get the secretary's message also? Dr. Madhura, do you have the we secretary? We have sent it. We have shared it with, with Dr. Sajit, I think. Uh, can he now... Uh, I think he must have uploaded it by now. Can we, uh, can we hear from Dr. Sajit? Hello? Yes, Dr. Madhura. Yeah, uh, I think you have received the secretary's voice. The video. Uh, we received only the minister's one. Okay. If there's a delay, if there's a delay, we will move yeah. into the next discussion then. Okay. Uh, yeah. have... now, let yeah. me then uh, introduce Dr. Upali Sedara. Dr. Upali Sedara is currently working as the chief advisor to the Honorable Minister and the Ministry of Education, uh, and uh, also uh, heading the. Uh, the education task uh, force uh, appointed by the cabinet and uh, he is a phd uh, in psychometrics in education uh, from the university of iowa and he has started his career as an assistant lecturer of clinical psychology in the faculty of medicine university of colombo uh, years back and also then he has come a long way in his professional journey uh, serving in more than uh, nearly 25 countries uh, as an employee of the World Bank, United Nations and uh, USAID, etc. And also he has been serving as, a, as the policy advisor to many governments, including Bangladesh, Pakistan and Malawi, and also Sri Lanka. And also some years back, uh, very, I mean, recent years, he has been serving as the Director General of the National uh, Institute of Education and meanwhile he has been uh, serving as a consultant to the Ministry of Education as well. So he is a veteran educationist. So let me introduce Dr. Sedara uh, to the forum. Dr. Sedara? Dr. Sedara, are you there? Are you online? Dr. Sedara? Uh, Dr. Sedar, uh, can you hear us? It's under the I name think of. There is a take. Is he okay? Hello. Ask them to unmute. Who has unmuted the name? Right. My okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, Sedar has been muted. Okay. Muted. I think it's all right. Do you all hear right. me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Right. Uh, thank you, Madhura, uh, for the introduction. The, I'm very pleased to be here. I think it's a very timely move, and this is the best way that we could meet today. Uh, because of the virus itself. As uh, I quite agree with what 
Professor Mudianse stated, education is basically a behavioral science. The, it is our basic mission is to change, shape, behavior of the next generation. The, unfortunately, education is not doing that enough. We are more into content teaching and things like that, loaded up. Children are loaded up with knowledge and things like that. But fundamental mission of education is to uh, shape behavior of the next generation, the, our children, our sons and daughters. The, in this particular situation, as Jean Piaget, the most leading Swiss psychologist in the world who shaped most of the educational theories, he talks of, uh, in this journey, all children assimilate their natural systems. They try to exercise the systems that we have to learn. In this process of assimilation, we try to accommodate a lot of things. Things that we did not have, we try to accommodate. Then, finally, what we do is adapt to the situation. This is what is we are going through right now, worldwide. All our children are at home locked in but at the same time we are now we don't know how to assimilate how to assimilate or how to exercise our systems to use our hands differently to use our mouth nose eyes protected in a different way this is where assimilation challenge that we all face including you and i today we cannot wear the mask for a long time. We feel very uncomfortable for us because we are used to a lot of fast ways of living. As Professor Mudiyansi says, unlearning is very much needed now for us to get into new behavior. But keep it in mind, it is much easier for children to learn the new behavior than adults learning. So the adapt to situations, we need to go into an accommodative process. How do we do that? That's where the problem is. Actually, this pandemic has given us a huge challenge. The children are children. They are normal ways of behavior that they are used to in school is to run together, play together, hug each other, jump together. They very difficult to learn the social distance that health professionals advocate today for, as a measure of uh, prevention. I always remember when I was, uh, I think perhaps I am the only one in this audience, perhaps as senior as me in age, <laughs> the, uh, when we were children during the malaria time, when we go to school in the morning, we had to take a quinine tablet every day. Then also our school was full with uh, our homes as well as schools were all with DDT because the DDT was spread to every house, every school, every government building. That is how malaria was brought to a stop. So these are, these are new experiences. The same way we know our children when the vaccinations were found, we got into the habit. Now Sri Lanka has a very good record on vaccination. And all vaccinations are given on a particular time period. And uh, by the time child admits to school, vaccination card has become a very important document to present to say that you, you have taken all preventive measures to maintain health. The good old days, it's a lot of trouble to develop uh, the core values in education. That failed. In 1918, the Principles Association of the Principles of Education. Why education is? What for? Number one they listed was health. Education is to protect your individual health, the community health, your home health. That is the first cardinal principle. It is nothing new. Even Lord Buddha said, the most profitable thing in life is health. You understand if health is gone, everything is gone. So this is a challenge that humanity has faced today. 
Now what is important? How do we do it? Where do we learn the good behavior? Behavioral change has to come. From a small child's day, the new parents who are just uh, bringing up children will have to now think of preventing their babies at home in a different manner. For that baby wearing a mask someday, if we had to go on like this without a vaccination for some time perhaps, that baby will learn to wear the mask maybe not like you and me. It may become part of the uniform that they come to school. But today our challenge is that our children are not used to it. How can we train them? I think Professor Mudiansi also rightly mentioned the first place to start is not school. We have to educate our parents. Professor we have say to that again. orient yeah, our homes to give the value of right. preventive measures at home. Okay. And uh, yeah. with, with that, all schools, we think, I think we will have to come up with other kinds of measures to bring parents to protective health measures and introduce them into this. And children will have to gradually turn into washing hands, keeping social distance as much as possible and taking other types of care. So I think the challenge rests with us basically to uh, go for parent education and school orientation. I will stop here, leaving room for discussion. Uh, Sound better than that? Th thank you, Professor Sedere. And uh, you have again brought up very important areas and a uh, lot of things related to how we can prevent this, prevent the transmission of this epidemic. And uh, you have gone back to the past few experiences also uh, and uh, then uh, discuss what has happened during this time period. Now, one thing from the medical point of view, what we, one thing that we can see is it's very important to prevent the transmission of this illness. So that is why we have termed this weekly webinars as weekly webinars as basically breaking the chain of transmission. Here we have to break the uh, chain of transmission from one person to other, where the disease is basically spreading as droplets. Again, there are a few things that we might need to understand also. We will bring in that during that discussion. So generally, since the disease is spread by droplets, that means if you are to prevent the chain of transmission, we are in the mask would be a good option. And washing your hands again would be a good option because if the droplets are basically deposited on the contaminated surface, again from hand to mouth, it can go. And similarly, keeping one meter in the distance. Again, another good strategy because again, then you can prevent the droplets from uh, going from one person to the other. However, having said that, there would be a huge challenge. There would be a huge challenge how we can implement all these things in a practical setup. We are about 4 million, 40 million children, I think 4 million no? in, the, in the country. And uh, this amount of children in the country, when they are going into schools, how can we make sure that these things are happening? How can we maintain the one meter distance? Or how can we ask these kids to wear the mask in the correct way? and keep them clean and adhere to the proper technique and even hand washing if you take the schools in the country not many schools will have proper hand washing facilities so those would be the challenges behavior also we need to change but in addition to that we need to look into the practical aspect also so regarding the decision to reopen the school now that is also being discussed i think we need to take all these factors into consideration and probably maybe a decision to slowly restart the education, maybe in a gradual manner, but making sure that those facilities are available. This is where the self-directed learning, the guided learning, and maybe the distance learning also comes into play. So a lot of important areas. They may ask that Ita Sangat roge tate, patrim, valak panekinik, some maninus, yamdiak saka chakara, eke prayu kika pita no then, kohoma de me, peter rutiagani, natan kohoma de atase di imaniter karani, make imanata muhuna avar nepalanima karane komode, podila my media karane komode, eke ateramiasa abiogia, kiti me abiogi hite tiagina, tamai api, ilanga pura, saka chakarana, one avene, avashavene. 
මොකද අපි කතා කරන්නේ ශිෂ්‍යයන් ගැන කුඩා දරුවන් ගැන කුඩා දරුදරයන් ගැන ඒ වගේම අපි කතා කරනවා විශාල ජනතාවක් විශාල ප්‍රමාණයක් ඉන්න මොකද මේ වසංගතිය දැනට පැතිරලා තියෙන ආකාරය බලනකොට මේක ගොඩක් වෙලාවට පැතිරෙන්නේ ජනතාව ගොඩක් ඉන්න ඒ වාතාශ්‍රයේ අඩු ඒ වගේම පිරිසිදු වීමේ පහසුකම් අඩු තැනක ගොඩක් වෙලාවක් ඉන්නවනා so we have to look into those different different possibilities and we have to make sure that we keep the strategies we keep the strategies of uh, controlling or preventing this disease are in line with maintaining the education so this is where the distance education strength training education comes into play so i will i would like to invite dr sujatha gamagi again who is very interested about education and use in the existing facilities to circumvent the challenges that we are having dr sujatha gamagi over to you thank you um i think my mic is okay right you know i think um, i'm going to take a slightly different approach uh, because we talked about health and behavioral issues and i think in the new normal those are those matter you know how they keep children apart keep them washing their hands etc for their behavior but i think what have we learned about you know about the technological and pedagogical aspects technological aspects that make that linked with the technological aspects are we know that uh, learnisha survey uh, 2018 uh, we found that family it's a representative sample survey across six countries in sri lanka we found that 64% of the houses did not household with children under 18 did not have um, internet they did not access the internet 48% had mobile phones uh, smartphones rather so i think it's likely at this time most people earlier they did not actually use the smartphones they really found no use for it i'm sure parents got in their use of smartphones and some bought smartphones so maybe about 50% had internet access another 50% did not but you know there's a lot of discussion about technology the digital divide and everything but i think the more important issue is pedagogical because let's look at the the parents and the families with the smartphones and internet access what did they get what we find is that i wouldn't say it's what did i call it i would say it's um, not so smart education meeting the smartphone because what teachers try to do what we we learn in the process of what teachers do in the classroom they take what's in the textbook they put it on the board and the children write it back on the in that in that um, Uh, notebooks everything is in the textbooks and 100% of our children in grade 6 to 11 in this country have a textbook for each subject in color print and they have mobile phones so actually techno if the teachers really want and if they make that teaching clean and smart it's not difficult to use the mobile phone and the text phone text uh, textbook test textbook and send, do a simple instruction to children let me give an example i'm you know i'm in several teacher groups this is a third um, several whatsapp groups just as observer this is um, there's a third grade the teacher sends uh, 19 pages for the environment subject appa avata sattu appa avata sattu ya list ekak hadana gedara hurata leda athu karana sattu anith sattu sa pitata inna sattu whole list and it all this and some more apa parisarne kande things we use another list 19 pages of pdf file and i would if a smart way of teaching would be to tell the mother please talk to a child and observe the observe the animals in the house that you raise as pets other animals in the house and animals outside the house and just get the child to write the reading book but what did the teacher do the teacher sent notes to this prime, third grade three child eight year old amazing child i this a particular child i work with curious and you know we we been working together going to the internet when he has questions and this child has to write down these notes so are the teachers is anything wrong with the teachers no i think the teachers are fine they've got the training we've got good teachers the problem is our exam system this is done because they think they have to uh, prepare the children for the exam so i think i heard you know we need to change the behaviors we need to change the health practices but the basic is 
to change the pedagogy. You know, we will not be ready for distance education or in class education if we continue with this pedagogy. Why is this pedagogy? Is it teachers bad, the curriculum bad? No, the primary curriculum is actually quite good. I've gone through that in depth. The primary curriculum, the learning outcomes are, it says, Parisarea Gaveshanekara Vindanya Klabai. That is a learning outcome. The child explores and appreciates nature. What has happened is, over time, I don't know, nobody questions this. The, the scholarship exam has become not something just to, um, uh, just to um, you know, pick the uh, girls with high cognitive ability with a say intelligence test. It has become a way of testing whether the students have learned. This was introduced in 1995. The result is we evaluated, we have studied the 20 years of past papers. What's in the past papers? We found 90, nearly 100 animals there with various about 15 attributes. Their beaks, what they eat, what their uh, eggs are like. In one exam, they asked who will be the part of the other. Just imagine a child or a, sitting for the scholarship exam in 2020 or the teacher preparing for the exam or the parent. Which animals, which body part will be asked? I mean, do people who set this exam, do they think about it? This is the same for star formation, for famous people, name, things on the coin. So, you know, people have a great time selling these stickers and children are cramming. I mean, this is the reality. And right now, the middle class parents are seeing that reality in their smartphones. Why do you give 19 pages for one week, three weeks for a child in grade three? eight-year-old on environment when the it's you know when the a, a sms message saying just observe the ch animals around you and uh, encourage the child to write it on this book when that instruction would have been sufficient why did the teacher send 19 pages that's because she's worried he might not be prepared for the exam so i would say we can talk about behavioral changes we can wash hands everything but we will not be prepared for another pandemic or another sudden closure of schools unless we get to the root of the problem, which is our examination system, which is, which is based on uh, enormous amount of quantities on remembering things throughout learning. It's the same with, and I'll take example, grade six, I've taken five minutes. Can I go a little bit more? Uh, yeah, maybe if you can one or two minutes, then you can actually sure. take part in the discussion, yes. Sure, very good. And I'll take grade six to nine. There are 13 subjects and the students are tested for each and every subject. You know, these subjects are not, you know, language, math and science, yes. Maybe history, but other subjects, these are about social, emotional development of the child. Self-care. Uh, this is ridiculous. I think some we need to most important thing is the medical community has been speaking about it actually for a while and then it died down. I think if you're serious, if we want our schools to be ready for the new normal, the new normal is that school closures can happen anytime. We need to switch from school based, class based learning to home based learning, and we cannot do it with this old. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what to describe it. This kind of teaching methods. So we need to. That we were talking about student-centered. Here is a student. Uh, good reason. And teachers, we can't change it over. We can't. It's not about changing teachers. It's not about changing the culture. It's about changing the exam system. Do you see all level? There's nine subjects. It should be reduced to five. Do you see? I mean, and there should be no testing for grade six to thirteen. No testing in um, primary grade. Scholarship exam should be an intelligence exam. If you make these changes, then the teachers will be free to practice their craft. The teachers know what to do. It. They, they, they are very quiet. They are a very dose and brunt. Whatever comes from the center, they follow. So I think civil society, the medical community actually has been very aware and they've been working very vociferous for a while. Some new neuroscientists, neurologists were talking about it. So we need to really get on the case to give the 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 fundamentals to change the fundamentals which is the road exam centric ex, um, education thank you
Hello. Yeah. So, yes, uh, Dr. Sujata. So we have discussed a lot of very important areas, and uh, I think probably we have to think about how we can use the existing resources that we have, like the textbooks uh, that we are having at the moment, and. Uh, to utilize them maximally because at this moment we might not be able to make large scale changes in education but having said that i mean if we can use the existing resources like the textbooks and like you mentioned if we can use different methods to reach out uh, online education is fine and it has a lot of uses but not everyone would be able to uh, reach online education in that case may be possible to use other modalities, maybe telecommunication, or maybe like you mentioned, the SMS system if possible, or even plain and simple, say radio broadcasting sure. or television. The most important thing is if we can, if you can coordinate those resources, maybe the telecommunication or the radio or the television with the education system, that's the very idea that we want to bring all these parties together and see whether there can be any coordination can happen so that the, the textbook system is available to the students and a radio can reach even the furthest away children with the limited resources. Or some areas, online education may be there, but if you can combine all these modalities together and have a system where we can reach out to the students in the faraway areas and also in the Colombo in an equal way, say imagine a good teacher talking to all the children in, in Sri Lanka. So that would be, in a way, that would be kind of achieving equity. So there are options. There are many options that, uh, uh, that we can use. Yeah. So we might not be able to make large scale changes. Probably it's not necessary also. I mean, if you can use the resources that we have, the Pelapatha system or the textbooks, and with that also, we might be able to implement student-centered education. Uh, Let's see whether uh, Mr. Jagat Vikram Singh, Mr. Jagat, are you here? Pramod, can we see Dr. Jagat, Mr. Jagat? Uh, sir, Mr. Jagat is not available at the moment, sir. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm, it would be very useful. We are trying to, to contact him, uh, but uh, still he is not available, sir. Yes. So, so try to call him and get him on board yeah, if possible. Yeah. Yeah, we are trying, and, uh, trying it yeah. on, sir. Yes. Great. Uh, so, Dr. Sajid, so if you can get him on board, let us know. Meanwhile, yeah, sure. shall we move into the discussion? Now, we have discussed a lot of things, sort of important things uh, with all the resource persons. And uh, then uh, uh, they are, the, the challenge of control in this situation when the school reopens, about millions of children coming in. And uh, yeah, change in behavior is very important. At the same time, the resources, if you if we ask them to use the mask, again, there will be a resource issue because we are talking about 4 million school children. And then, uh, I mean, if you are going for disposable mask, can we provide 4 million every day? I don't think even the country can produce that number for, for everyone. And uh, if you are using cloth mask, which may be adequate, but then we have to teach how to clean them, the, the, the technique of using it and how to clean them. Because if the mask is unclean, that might lead to more problems. And hand washing. Hand washing also, I mean, even the best schools, top schools in Colombo might have problems in providing proper hand washing facilities and sanitizer facilities for everyone. So those are huge challenges. So if we are to implement or maybe to slowly start education, we need to think about all these aspects. So those are the challenges. So shall we get back to the discussion? Uh, we can do the discussion in two ways. Either you can give your chat messages or if you can raise mask, raise your hand, sorry, raise your hand using the raise hand feature, then we can unmute too. And then uh, you can come up with your, your opinion or maybe your ideas. We'll move into the discussion straight away. Most of the panelists are available. And uh, now this is your chance. Yeah, there, there's Mr. Sumati. Dr. Sajid, can you unmute him? Yes, Ms. Sumati, you can go ahead. Uh, have a few questions for Sujata Gamage. Can you hear me? Sure. Yes, 
before that, I have a thing about masks. I just want to know from the medical establishment, uh, this is a side question, how important masks are when children and teachers will be closely uh, interacting. I mean, they'll be touching pens and desks and uh, sharing books and uh, spaces. Uh, this is a technical question. Uh, apart from the fact I find face masks will be unfeasible, not very feasible, but that's, I'm not an expert on this. On the education, I find um, that, uh, I, I, I found that 64% does not have a smartphone uh, in no. 2018. 64% uh, did not have internet access. Okay, did, did not have internet yeah. access, including right. smart, uh, smartphone. Uh, uh, I, I let presume. me put it in, yeah, let me put another. 34% had internet access, though 48% had uh, smartphones. Right, so, okay, so 64 did not have internet uh, access, and suddenly they will have, and just internet access does not mean it is usable for this uh, purpose, you know. I just had uh, my SLT net uh, breakdown, uh, my fiber connection uh, in the last week I'm using other kinds of uh, methods. Anyway, the pedagogical aspects mm -hmm. is what... Uh, one thing you said that intelligence tests can be used. Mm. I think intelligence tests are highly biased. This has been used in uh, America and have been and are being used, are being contested right, left and center. Abolishing of exams, uh, I, I'll just make a comment and then I'm writing my own paper and things like that. You can come back, you don't have to come back. Okay. I just want to, you know, uh, I just want to say that exams, abolishing of exams will marginalize marginalized communities further for, for you know in a variety of ways so we are not finland you know we are you know it's a smaller number of people with a different kind of income level so everybody talks of finland and they have abolished that's that's not how it works i agree with you that our educational system is a problem but that has to do with jobs and competition and all that. I mean, intelligence tests, people will do private tuition for intelligence tests. So I think this is a different uh, kind of thing. And, okay, I'll stop there. I mean, I, I'm sure others have things to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Can uh, I respond? Thank, thank you for that comment. Uh, I think, uh, Dr. Sujata Kamagi, before you respond, I think the whole, the whole objective of this discussion is to how to adapt to the current situation, current situation. And, 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 and maintain yeah, exactly. that we make sure that the control of the epidemic happens yeah. uh, hand in hand with the, while continuing the education or maybe restart the education. So definitely at this moment, I don't think we should be proposing yeah. large scale changes in the system. Let's see what we can make use of what is currently available as simple yeah. as a textbook system and to right. deliver the education as it is, uh, yeah. I mean, just to start, yes. And uh, yeah. Yeah, if you can respond very yeah. briefly, that would be really sure. Good. Actually, exactly. I mean, let's talk offline uh, with the uh, lady. I get the name, and but I think how do you respond? I think, as I said, uh, it's very difficult for primary school children and for children sitting for exams. And the NIE has already done a wonderful job uh, are in television programs with children sitting for exams. I think that we have possibilities with grade six to 11, six to uh, nine group. There's no exam pressure and the teachers can practice this, you know, lean and smart education. I think I'm afraid for children in primary grades that teachers are going to be pressured by the scholarship exam and they're used to teaching for the exam. So they will continue to send large quantities of information to the children. One thing I think the Ministry of Education in NIE can do is send a general uh, communication to the teachers, um, you know, give simple instructions for primary school children and to, um, so that they can do these simple things at home. Uh, even for grades six to 11, again, give simple instructions and ask them to do those referring to the uh, textbook. So I think those are things we can do. I think it's very important if NIE can go with the sort of announcement for the teachers, because right now I'm in several WhatsApp groups 
it's incredible one 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 uh, parent got 90 pages and she got them printed out this is for children in grades 2 and 4 totally unnecessary so i think in the short term yes i think teachers are frantic they are doing their best they have to cover the syllabus to prepare children for the exam so i i know we can't change the exam at this time, but we need to make the create the awareness because next time the something comes around and schools are closed we are going to see the same thing again so I think the reducing content, reducing the pedagogy, but as I said, the textbooks, SMS messages, TV and radio, uh, we need to use them uh, max, uh, to the maximum. Yeah. So I, I think all of us are in agreement regarding one thing that let's use the existing resources and maybe the system to, to promote student-centered learning and using the resources available in a combined way. There are a few comments. Dr. Suranji, you want to make a comment? And then uh, Gayatri. And uh, Dr. Indika, actually, uh, I am going to invite the NI, DGNI as well. Uh, yeah. And probably several PDs. Okay, yeah. yeah. And also, I uh, I need to clarify something also with regard to the things that, I mean, I think I'm after Dr. Uh, the Suranji. Yeah. Shall you give uh, Dr. Suranji and then yeah, yeah. Gayatri and then move into the the directors, then you can invite them. Yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, yes. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm from UK and uh, uh, I'm joining you uh, to give a few comments on uh, what I have observed in both countries because uh, uh, I'm a postgraduate medical administrator who has finished my education in uh, postgraduate education in Sri Lanka and now I'm doing my PhD in UK. So I thought it's better to uh, join with you and give my few observations in here and in Sri Lanka as my motherland and how to reopen my uh, schools in my country in Sri Lanka. So what I, uh, I have few comments, uh, see whether it is, uh, whether you can adjust with those. Mm -hmm. um, usually that uh, what is happening here is, uh, there, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, sure. Uh, they, are, they are going to open the school slowly that uh, from Monday they are opening receptions and free schools and uh, year 6 and year 10 and 12. Uh, but they are not going to take all the students at one time. They have sent uh, messages to parents and asked whether which days of the uh, week you can send your kids. So we have selected our own dates and uh, one student will get two days each week, but not the full time. Only the morning schools will open. Uh, what, what, what is the practice here is the bubble system. That means that one cohort will be in the school at same time in same day. Uh, they will not get connected with other students or they will not get touch with other students. So there is a cohort. If the, uh, vi if the virus is spreading or something is happening, that cohort is there. So the, um, that uh, her, herd immunity also functioning in this theory. Uh, and these, at the same time, what, what it means that um, even though the online system is going on, uh, they can meet their teachers in few hours per week and get the physical contacts with teachers and um, they, can, uh, they can have updates on their education. They will slowly go for reopening of the schools for full five days. Uh, that is the plan. At the same time, they will not open the school for all grades at the same time. Only the grades that are uh, essential. I mean, that, uh, like uh, in our country, like the scholarship grades and the year, year 10 O-level uh, classes, A-level classes, we can reopen slowly, but with not all students with a plan that only few students can come to the school in a few hours. Yeah, Is actually, yeah. Dr. Suranji, just, I, I think, I mean, uh, if you can, you can continue actually. Tron, actually in Sri Lanka also, we have been taking the similar kind of, you know, in, initiatives mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to reopening of schools. So after you, I will explain a little bit of how we are doing this. 
sure that I'm just giving comments, not comparing this country with my country, that uh, I would like to give my observations and then you can uh, plan your, uh, I mean, the reopening plan in a good way. Uh, and the other thing I want to say that uh, if you are after this pandemic, if you are going to talk about the pandemic or how to prepare a pandemic for kids, that is not 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 good for their mental health. Usually, uh, that uh, uh, if you are concerning about their psychology, the best way is to not to make them too much stress on this uh, pandemic. Uh, so it is better if we can continue with the normal curriculum. Uh, even though we are trying to give few life skills on the pandemic, uh, we should not stress on them. We should continue our normal education without making much stress. And I can uh, I can point out five five factors we are practicing here. Uh, you can ask children to uh, uh, make evidence on how they are working, uh, how they how they are working to be active, to connect with. Uh, their friends, siblings, and grandma, granddad, those things, and how they are practicing give, such as uh, uh, giving uh, giving support to your elders, giving support to your siblings. These are the psychological indicators they are using in this time during the pandemic. And again, uh, how they are how they are keep learning. You can give evidence to your group, and uh, how they are how they are observing their environment. Those five uh, five factors are practicing here for keep them uh, psychologically healthy, and they are not worried about talking too much about pandemic. Uh, so these are my observations, and uh, in Sri Lanka also you can use this in a good way. Actually, Doctor Indika, can I just uh, uh, briefly explain how uh, I mean? Just I think I mean for the our peripheral area uh, officials also can uh, know about that because by by now uh, we have been working with the Ministry of Health very closely and we have developed the Ministry of Education the health division has done a very uh, explanatory health guideline and it is now distributed to the schools the zonal officers actually it will go to the schools through the zonal directors of education. And also with regard to the face masks and uh, the thermometers, etc. Actually, the ministry is now uh, going to provide at least uh, washable face masks, a couple of, you know, a, a small set at least uh, to make sure that the children will be safe at least during the first one or two months. So we are taking care of that. And also with regard to this, uh, the social distancing and all that, the schools will be reopening, uh, reopened in a phased manner. Uh, most uh, importantly, actually, the students who are sitting the all-level examinations and A-level examinations will come first. And uh, the smaller schools, we have some, you know, kind of like uh, even there are around 1,000, 1,500 schools with less than 50 children in each so we are going to sometimes most probably they will be starting their schools and uh, a lot of other measures also has been taken i think similarly to the other countries we have been following the guidelines issued by the un as well as the who and we are working with the unicef very closely uh, in order to facilitate the school heads and the children and the staff uh, so the media also are linking with us uh, I think, uh, I mean, if you want, Dr. Indika, if you want anyone else to invite, you can do so. Otherwise, I can invite the DG and I. Was... Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, there's a uh, Gayatri want to make a comment. Can you make a very brief comment and then we'll move into the other DGs quickly. Yeah. I think I brief, uh, if the comments are brief, then it will be brief. Uh, but to be brief, yeah. Time for the others. Yeah. Because we are talking about student-centered learning, so let's make the comments very yeah. brief and succinct. Gayatri, you want to make a comment? Can you unmute, Dr. Pamot? Can you unmute Gayatri Gajapati? No? Yeah, I have already unmuted her. Now she has to unmute her from her side. Uh, okay, yeah. Then we will move into the next. Uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Madhura, can you invite the director and I to make a brief comment? I mean, yeah, 
uh, thank you, Dr. Indika. Now, uh, we have Dr. Sunil Jayanta Navaratna, I think, logged in. Uh, he is the D Director General of the NIE. Actually, uh, he started, I mean, the duties of the NIE very recently, and soon after he assumed the duties, he started uh, along with the Ministry of Education with the full support of the ministry and other departments also, uh, and some other private sector organizations as well, like SLIT. Uh, uh, to launch uh, an online education program. Actually, online means remote learning program through the televisions. I think Dr. Uh, Navaratna is there with us. Can you hear us, Dr. Navaratna? Hello? Is Dr. Sunil Jayanta Navaratna here? I'm not seeing uh, a name appearing as Sunil Jayanth in uh, If, if he's uh, with another name, please uh, let us know. Yeah, and meanwhile, his, his email is Jayanava. Uh, till he comes in, till he comes in, uh, can we make few comments okay. related to... You can, you can unmute Dr. Darshana. He is uh, Dr. Darshana because he is coming through another link. Uh, is it uh, Darshana Samaravir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have unmuted uh, Darshana Samaravir. There are. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, get your link. So I am coming through Darshana's line. Okay. We, we can go ahead, uh, Dr. Right. Navarath. Okay, go ahead now. Okay. Thanks uh, 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 so inviting me and uh, as Madhura said, uh, to support the education system in Sri Lanka during COVID time, uh, under the Honorable Minister, Honorable Dallas Salaparama and Honorable uh, Madhura Gunawadana initiated a television program. So they presented the uh, cabinet paper on April 1st, 7th we got the approval and 10th we initiated the program and on 20th we managed to start telecasting. So that is, uh, I think, a uh, very remarkable achievement. Within 10 days, uh, we started uh, two channels by combining I channel and uh, uh, Netra through Rupavahini to telecast our education program, both in Singhala and Tamil. Uh, as you know, so we have to start the channel by 4 o'clock in the morning and uh, till evening 7 o'clock, uh, 15 hours a day and 107, uh, 105 hours a week, we have to cover 7 days, 24, uh, the, that 15 hours programs. It's a massive task. We didn't have even uh, much facilities. Uh, even during the curfew time, uh, corona threat and everything, we managed to produce all these programs thanks to our staff, uh, Minister of Education and all. And some programs are recorded in Jaffna. And we are getting those programs through helicopters and ambulance and various uh, modes. And SLIT, Sri Lanka Institute of Education, uh, Institute of Information Technology is helping us to produce it. And also, uh, uh, one more uh, channel uh, under the Reverend is helping us and also we are doing. So as a result, so we managed to cover uh, O-level, A-level and grade 5 lectures. Now even now you can see that is one of the programs. And I would like to thank all the supporters who gave us and uh, every day we are doing and we are improving the quality uh, because earlier uh, our teachers uh, teaching methodologies were a little uh, boring now. They are improving the uh, uh, things also. And also, now in future, we want to convert to a, uh, what you call this uh, full-time uh, education channel, both single and Tamil, supported with the radio program. That's a brief introduction. I think, uh, Dr. Navaratna, I, I fully agree with your comments. And then uh, I mean, uh, the amount of work that has been done seemed to be 
really vast and really huge and the because we have to think of those techniques because online learning will not be available for everyone even though that's a good technique it might not be available for everyone so in that case we need to try out all the modes of technologies that we have including online and radio television and even the printed media if necessary or telecommunication if you combine all this together i think that would be efficient and we should be able to reach out even the remotest areas and, and creating equity and like uh, dr sujata mentioned if you can make use of the environment and have a kind of interactive dialogue with the students while go through while reaching them through these media and using the existing system like the pelopos system that would be a real so what we need it looks that we have the things in bits and pieces we have the pelopos system and we have the television and the radio and we are doing so many programs so if there is a coordination between all these i think we should be able to create some kind of equity maybe a better equity than it is at the moment and this could be a golden opportunity dr professor rasnayaka prasam diyasi also want to make a comment here Yeah, just mama mama hitanne api den api godat durata me english em makata karana nisa warin war api singhalen nikan katha karamu kiyala issalat api poronduna ehena ada can you hear me yes sir we can oh. we hear you oh, oh. oh. i think uh, mam mam nikan bohoma saralawa api katha karapu dewal gan nawatha matak kar ganima karana nam mama hitanne api mule indalama api api चार्यावान अध्यापन අපට පරිපූර්ණ වශයෙන් මේ දුරස්ත අධ්‍යාපනයකට අපට ලංකාවම හැරෙන්නේ කියලා මම හිතන්නේ මේක දැනට තියෙන තාවකාලික දෙයක් දුරස්ත අධ්‍යාපනයේ ඵල නිරා ගන්නට අවශ්‍යයි මම හිතන්නේ අනාගතයේදී අපිට දුරස්ත අධ්‍යාපනයයි පාසල් වලට ඇවිල්ලා කරන අධ්‍යාපනයයි දෙකම එකට මිශ්‍ර කරගත් දෙයක් කරන්න සිද්ධ වෙන්නේ ඔක්කොටම වශයෙන් මට පේන්නේ ඒ තැන් වලට වඩාත් උචිත ක්‍රමයන් ඒ තැන් වල තියෙන විශේෂඥයන් අධ්‍යාපන විශේෂඥ විතින් සොයාගෙන ඒවා ඒවා අඩොප්ට් කරගත යුතුයි යොදා ගත යුතුයි කියන එකයි මට පේන්නේ. Thank you. Uh thank you Prasun dear. So I mean as you mentioned it's very important to change the behavior and maybe we have to combine all these together. How we can make use of the facilities that we have and employ distance learning to the extent possible and and also reopen in the schools in a way that would be practically feasible within the within the means of controlling the disease uh, yes uh, if you can mention now uh, do you have anyone from the infection control anyone from the microbiology to talk about few things that were mentioned meanwhile i mean i will also mention few things related to the some concerns related to this concern now uh, the, uh, the control of the epidemic now many are talking about say decontamination chambers and uh, some are mentioning about immune booster systems or the vaccine i think we need to have some clear understanding about this disease also and the control process because if we are to go hand in hand and and make sure that the disease control process is also in line with the other measures that we are taking to restart the education we need to have some simple understanding one basic thing is all of us don't know much about this virus because this started about 4 months ago and this is a new virus that's why we call it a novel coronavirus at the same time 
the medical profession and the scientists know that it behaves very much similar to previous influenza epidemics. So there are certain things known. So at this situation, I think we have to make use of the known science, the known science and the evidence-based science to control. It is very well known that this virus is killed by soap and maybe alcohol-based sanitizers. That is why it's always said that you have to uh, clean the hand for 20 seconds. And it is very well known that it is spread by the droplets. That is where the advice regarding the mask and the one meter distance comes into play. But <laughs> regarding, say, the immune boosters, no one has proved. So those areas, I don't think we should go into. Maybe like other alternative treatment because no one has really proven that they work. And the, the danger go, of going into those areas, like the alternative methods, is that it will create a false sense of security. For example, decontamination chambers. It hasn't been proven that the decontamination chambers can destroy the virus. But at the same time, it can be <coughs> harmful for the skin or for the respiratory system. So it's very important that we go for the simple basic measures in controlling. And someone was asking about immune boosters. Again, it hasn't been proven. And regarding vaccination, it will take at least one year for a, for a vaccine to come. So I think at this moment, it's best to go for the known science regarding control measures. And the known science is avoid crowded places, avoid poorly ventilated places, and avoid being in these places for a long time. If possible, try to maintain one meter's distance. Hand sanitation has been advocated very widely and very correctly, and the correct use of masks. So those are the simple measures. I think we should adopt those simple measures. At the same time, we got to be very cognizant of the practical realities. How can we provide masks to all four million children? And if it is disposable mask, is it financially feasible, logistical feasible? How can we provide hand sanitation or even the toilet facilities? So if there is a decision for gradual reopening, I think those realities has also to also uh, should be taken into consideration. Yeah, Dr. Indika, that's why actually uh, I wanted to mention that uh, ministry is investing, uh, you know, it's not an investment, but for the basic uh, requirements, the accessories and all that, the ministry is investing so much this time. Actually, our budgets are uh, diverted to support the schools uh, to you know, establish the wash basings and all that, and also to provide uh, these um, face masks, at least uh, non, I mean, washable ones, at least a small set for each kid, and also uh, kind of you know the thermometers, etc. Uh, and I think I mean uh, even the indigenous, you know, the local people who are actually. Uh, uh, in capability of, you know, who are capable of, you know, producing uh, uh, the standard face masks can uh, actually produce these and these kind of, you know, regional or peripheral uh, businesses also can be promoted by the government. And, but they have to be in the standards, in the, in the uh, real, you know, norms and standards. But however, for the beginning, the, the government is taking steps to provide all these things to the schools. But I think, I mean, meanwhile, we have been just this morning also in a brief discussion that uh, the children were aboard, like, you know, uh, for three months at their homes. Uh, some children actually, they have singling the learning environment. aggressive Easter activities were a do not. Daru under the Napu, the hard negative came of Covid nineteen willing Kuma the protect Veniki and again drama eka Kadala play her under a can social distancing Tiagan, Mevagi, then Lamangi, Mangitano, Daruangi, Manasikatwe, or a genomata Sankendrane, Kirima Sadaha, Amkisi, Mulika Piero, Altika, Gana Vino Pasalveli. The Mevagi Mata Hituni, Mama Pautelikova, Vishwasakaranami, Eastric activities, Tamai make at Hundama Deki and Eker. Apitama discuss Karanda Patanga Tavitrai, Manghitano, Evagi, Dekinut, Darwanva, or Igenuma, Yamukaraganda, Gururunta Pasuak Vakila. Thing are a stress secati, Tunikaraganda, Samara Vita, 
ियलिया I think he will be able to tell us how the provincial uh, departments have done so far. I mean, uh, their job to facilitate the children, especially uh, during the COVID the school shut period, mm -hmm. to educate them uh, through whatever the media available. I mean, whatever the possible you know means available. So they have the experience. So, Mr. Tilak. Uh, Dr. Madhura, under which name is uh, Dr. Tilak uh, is in? Uh, because uh, we can't see Tilak per se. I think P D Tilak. Can I Tilak? Actually, he was uh, under no, name Tilak. T H I L A K. I know. It's uh, yeah. Okay, I have uh, unmuted Tilak. Now he has to unmute from Tilak? his side. Mr. Tilak, can I hope you are with us? Yes. Yeah. Tilak. Uh, Palat. Oh, eh. Man, another. Oh, another. Right. 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 एवागेम मे साकाचा वेदी करुण राशि के उना मैं इधर ने आवश्यक डॉक्टर मधुरा के हेल्प के पकाता विता वेदगा दरुआ के मानस निदास क्रीम में के तमाय आपे प्रमुख कार्य विते दरुआंगे शिष्य जीविते में तेक कल माय तने दरुए मास देखा हमारा पास लेंगी वत्वेला दिमाग पियांगे अत्तरांगुए नेता वैधिहितियांगे � सहम पैत्र की मां अभियोग के टलाक पहले इन्नो एकात तमाय यार दरुआ के सुकुरु तो पांच साल जीवित हैं वर्ते ला दरुआ एक तरह विधिये के टे कोट्टू ऐले इन्नो इधर में दरुआ नेवता पांच साल का तकरना कोटे आप ही अभियोग राशि के टे मुहून देनो ने अभियोग बिलिमंद आप ही पावगी दिन वाले दिगं दिगर पांच साल सूदा नंकरी में संबंध तो पहले दिल्ली उपदेश आध्यापन आमात्यां से साउथ के आंसवलिंग आप इतने लेबिलती हैं ना ये वाके में में दारुआ मितिक का लापी अतर में दारुओ आत्तेरी ये नहीं में खाले तूरा दारुओ तेरे का संबंध होना ये संबंध होना आकार एक ना माइटा ने विविध मात्रती बिनो कौन गुरु वाले आई इतना मागे दारुआ ऐसे थे ना दारुआ ते का संबंध भी नहीं निकले दिमाग भी वही इतना मागे दारुआ पास अध्यापन एक ही बात थे ना दारुआ टा अध्यापन ही दिन नहीं निकले मैं निशा पासुगे दिन वाला एक तरह विधि के ताक्षणिक थरंग यात्री बुने ये दारुआ टे ताक्षणिक दागे ना Jadi pelat aku di rumah kan, mungkin pelat yang yang kisah dah sah aku baca kita yang kian, madiam pelat kian ni langkah awal. Oh, silum apa yang ada di mana pelat? Daru laksa paham ara, adi apa ni laban langkah awal ni mau pasal sanksi awat dia na. Ebagai madi duskar pasal dia na pelat. Mei daru tek api kau hendak mei kahari. Tapi mama pelat aku di rumah tu madiam pelat dia rapi. Kati ke kematian aku sangat hangkar. अतरम आपे ताक्षणिक आपे टे लंगवेंट पुराने सीए टा हाथली स्पाह कर पामा ऊपर ही में और मैं सीए टे तवात विशाल पनास पाह कर मैं अवस्था वाले बिन्न हैं इनसा आपे पासुगीय काले मैं दारुआन ताक्षणे उससे दारु संबंध कर रखा तवा गेम आती दुष्कर ऐतक अम्मल दारु बिन्नुई आपे साधारण एक कराने टो उत्साह दारुओ आता था मैं पाचचरण नापे काटी तो करा सह में दारुओ एक काटा था मैं मामा उस अस्पेल दारु ओगे ना ऐसा आहला बेलो उस अस्पेल दारु आंगे सी ये टा आनुओ कटे वैरी संख्या वगैरह टा मैं पासो का मापी लाभ दूँ ना ये वा मुद्रे नहीं करा ला 
विधोल बतूर गुरुरु हरा दिमाउपियो हरा दारुवांड लबा दो ये वाके मापी तैपैले नहीं है वो मैं ऐसे दुष्कर प्रदेश के इन दारुए कुटे तैपैले इन तमांगे नामटे यंग किस पैवरुमा को दिया आवत दारुवांड लोगों कहेंगी मत कहती हुई ना मांगो इन्हें अनिता ही तो नमक ही नहीं कहती दमिताक्षी ने गत्त महितने � मैं पीली बंदा आवादानी उम्मीद करके नहीं इंद्रा हरी आमारू ही मैं क्या किया वाला ना मैं क्या टक पीली तो रुस आपके आना ओन में एक टक दारुए योमु है ना खाले सीमा मत्ती ना एक इल्ले दारुए खादवा गान ने पुलवां खाले सीमा मत्ती ना मगर मैं अध्यापने की ने क्या गुरुवारे दारुए यात्रा सिद्ध विविध क्रम में संधा योद्धा गत्ता अभी सामाहरा दरुवंड में कारने में में विषय दरुम देन ना पड़ी वीडियो क्लिप हाँ दला दरुवंड ये आदि ने करना वस्ता वधु में इन्हीं सा मामा विश्वास करने दिया तमाय में दरुवा के मानस सक्षस कराने टे अभी पाउगी दवस्सोला पड़ी वैरस कहाँ कीपिया करा एकात तमाय दरुवंड थमांट मैं अभियोगी अत्यंत के दारुओं नवनिपुण मोले टेओ में लेती हैं ना एक आता ध्यापन है तीन ये नवनिपुण आप इधर एली दाग पाने टेबल आप रोते हैं ये वाके में दारुओं अंटे याम याम हैकी पामनी खुदा प्रमाणी परिश्रम करने टापे दारु योग करा ये वाके में उपदान वालंकार में अधिक्रियात में कभी ना रा� इलाके का पासा सूदा नाम के लिए में संबंध हैं अभी फसुए ही दिन वाला मैं पहली बार पलात पाल ने बालादारिंग के साथ अच्छा करा पलात के अंदर तो तबे मध्यम पलात है तीन अभियोगी तमाई सी एट फनस्थाय पासा लोट तमाई वासर पूरा जाले पासुकान थी इन्हें तो वो आप ही आप सेदी में किन्हें के साउथ के आंसर देना पलात पान आयतन तक का साक्षात अच्छा कर ला मेरे ने कोटा जाले ऐसे आ रहे थे संबंध वेल थी ना ये वाके में कुड़ा दारु का तो ते हम दें मैं पांच साल भी उठ के रीम की ने के अध्यापन आमात्यां से योजना कराने आधी रब विधि ऐट आर पांच साल भी उठ के रीम आई के नीता में अधगर ते के मगर आर समाज ऐसा हो कि उपदेश सानुव क्रियात्मक कराने पुलों पांच साल पांच सी या कपी आंदोलन जन्नत ही ना एक तक में ये दारू अंट ये देने टो वाला मूली का पांच सौ कांटिक में वन कोट आपी साखा साखा इच्छा कर लेती ही ना मामा एक योजना वक्त कराने के में थी दंग दंग ऐतरम में कोविड देख के आपी लोगों अभियोग के टमुने दिल दिनो भूमि का वो आदेश विनाश कराने सिद्ध वेल दिए ना दारुआ समारक कला वाटो गुरुओं रेट वड़ा अभी बहुत गिल लती ना इकनी सा दारु गुरुओं रेट भूमि का विनाश हुए ना पंथी का हमारे सोरूपे विनाश हुए ना ये वाके में दारुआ एगेम करना आकारे विनाश कराने सिद्ध वेना विवाह के क्रम में विनाश कराने � आवश्यक है क्या दास मम्मी क्या नम्मे सिलो अभियोग जाय गाने टे अबे सिलो जनार समानात पे तावे लेबिंडे ना मै याती तले पास कां के ने एक्सेस के ने काफी पाला ते हुंगा मार्डुई ए पीली बंदो वा जाती को मार्ट में गवदा नहीं ओमुकराने के लह माइल्ला सिटी नो बहुत मिस्तु थैंक यू वेरी मच बहुमिस्तुति ये आटी ना आधार स्पर्श है ना वील बी मूविंग इनटू ए ना द वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट पर्सन इस वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट गेट द गेट द द द ब्रॉडकास्ट यू नो द रेडियो बिकॉज़ ये थॉट ऑफ गेटिंग द सिंपल एस्पेक्ट इनटू द प्रैक्टिकल इम्प्लीमेंटेशन एंड दिस इस से आधे द श्रीलंका ब्रॉडकास्ट इन कॉर्पोरेशन कम्स वेरी इम्पोर्टेंट एंड वी हैव द चेयरमैन ऑफ द एसएलबीटी � हेलो 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 इंदिका ओ मैं मामा दे मैं विलार साका मैंने साका साका चला मैंने कभी कथा करा नहीं अभी मैं पढ़ी विलार पर कथा करा ना ओ जात जाते को बुलाते हैं ओ जाते को गाने के लिए विधि है चाहे 
අපි ඒතරම මේ අධ්‍යාපනික වශයෙන් විශාල වැඩසටහන් ප්‍රමාණයක් දරුව වෙනුවෙන් දියත් කරා ඒ මේ වැඩසටහන් වල විශේෂයෙන්ම සංයුතිය දරුවන්ට මං හිතනවා අධ්‍යාපනික වශයෙන් වගේම ඒගොල්ලන්ගේ අයවතුම් පැවතුම් සහ මේ සියලු දේවල් කෙරෙහි බලපානවා විශේෂයෙන්ම මේ වගේ අවධියකදී අපි සන්නිවේදන මාධ්‍යයක් විදියට සන්නිවේදන කාර්යය අධ්‍යාපනික වශයෙන් යොමු කරලා තියෙනවා ඊටමත් දැඩි විදියට විශේෂයෙන්ම මේ निशाउन uh, प्रादेशिकलाशेषिताल अभी संबंधकार प्रमाण विशेष निष्पादी अभी योजना योजना
श्रीलंक <laughs> इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मीडिया डिवाइस डिजिटल उपकरण रेडियो प्रोग्रम्स रेडियो प्रोग्राम ऑस्ट्रेलिया अमेरिका वे पवा प्रादेश प्रात अनीकारनेटी नवा जीवित ओणम देखदी प्रलेखन सेवा मंडल जातिकाल अनुदित विशाल मे ऑनलाइन लर्निंग and have a more equitable kind of approach even someone in kalam will be benefiting from radio because even the i mean visual images are fine but even the even the the psychological mental images can be very powerful so 
radio can do a good job there as well so why not to get together with all these and come up with a coordinated mechanism so exactly. that uh, yes i think that, that would be very sure. useful yes yeah Should i think we have the health secretary's message also and uh, yeah there are comments coming from congregation in the slbc uh, for the great work that they are doing so i think we should work together uh, pramod can we get the message from the secretary uh, of the I, I, the education ministry yes. Good afternoon to you all. Though the COVID-19 pandemic uh, has disrupted our education system, on the positive perspective, I am very pleased to witness the efforts of the Together by many parties, including health sector, national and provincial education authorities, national media, NGOs and INGOs, and many more support the continuation of the learning process of school children. The various possible means around the country. the whole country experience technology application in a wider range of usual in creating virtual learning environment to encourage the student to continue with their learning while staying in the home it was experience and lessons for all of us at whole new level at this moment since the sri lanka has been able to control the pandemic situation there are positive signal of possibility of to reopen the country with high level of safety precaution simply the social norms have changed and we will all have to adjust our selves for the new normal similarly as education as well as adults we hold the responsibility to preparing our young generation benefit to learn better and face unforeseen features while adapting the new normal Therefore, I firmly believe that this discussion forum will guide all of us how to make better future in the education system. I sincerely appreciate the intervention by the Sri Lanka Medical Association in organizing this discussion, and also offer my thanks to all participants for their support and given to make this discussion success. And I also thank all the officials of the Ministry of Education, Education Secretary, and other officials too. Uh, participating in this program thank you very much thank you uh, professor mudia say you want to make a very brief comment yeah. you'll make yeah. the comment very brief I, yeah very brief now uh, i mean there are diversity of ideas and methods people are thinking of i mean it's good when you have a situation like this it's good to think of diverse approaches in education but what is required is for us to research it for us to uh, analyze it education research is a must in other words we should think of evidence based education mange wagantiya singhal nu kiyanna mata pena hatiyata api katha karana hamo matare vividha krama veda anugamane karana vividha approaches thiyena man hitane hame ekak ma hondai mokada hamota ma ekam vidhi approaches walta adiya wenas wenas vidhi krama veda thamai bhavitha karana wenne igenni nedi habai api ekak hita gata yutui me wage වියසනයක් සිද්ධ වුණාම ડિස්ටර්බන්ස් එකක් වුණාම තමයි අලුතෙන් අලු ගසා දාලා නැගිටින් නැට පුළුවන් වෙන්නේ හැබැයි ඒක හරියට විද්‍යාත්මකව කරන්න නම් අපි මේ කරන දේවල් වල විද්‍යාත්මක පදනම හොයා බලන්නට ඕනේ විද්‍යාත්මකව අධ්‍යයනය කරන්න අපි ඔයාලට කියන්නේ এডියුකේෂන් රිසර්ච් කියලා දැන් අපි අර එවිඩන්ස් බේස් මෙඩිසින් කියන වාගේම එවිඩන්ස් බේස් এডියුකේෂන් කියලා කතාවක් කරනවා මම හිතන්නේ ඒක නිසා අපි අපේ රට තුල අපේ විවිධ අධ්‍යාපනඥයන් එකතු වෙලා අධ්‍යාපනය පිළිබඳ කරන පරිශ්‍රණ කරන්නට පටන් ගත යුතුයි මේක හොඳ අවස්ථාවක් ඒ වෙනස ඇති කරගන්නට කියලා. Thank you. Yeah, fully agree uh, professor Mudian say uh, do, uh, can we have some brief comments uh, dr madura do we have any other comments if we can make it very briefly because we are yeah. uh, running short of time as well very brief comments madura not muted Madhura, you, you have to unmute your mic. Madhura, again, you have to unmute. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, at this point, I would like to invite my colleague, Mr. Neil Gunadasa, who is the director of the data management section. Actually, he used to uh, work at the IT division as well some years back, and now we are actually heading to uh, bring about. a huge uh, you know transformation in education we have thought of that 
uh, in terms of uh, improving the digitalized, uh, you know, digital learning methods. I mean, somehow or the other, we have to make that those practices incorporated into the education system because uh, we are now in a different era. So uh, I think uh, Mr. Neil will uh, give some thoughts in this regard. Mr. Neil? He is uh, Dr. Sajid. Can you unmute him? He is Neil Gunadasa. N i e l dot g u n a s. He's already unmuted. I think you can. Talk. Yeah, unmuted. Okay, Mr. Neil. Mr. Neil Gunadasa, you should be able to. You should be hearing us now, right? Can't hear. You are unmuted. You can talk now. I think he may be having some issues Neil? with his uh, microphone. I guess. Let me call him. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Mr. He Maharaj, he want to make a comment. Uh, Dr. Pamod. Yeah, he's from Australia. I tell his uh, friend of mine, he's a uh, agriculture graduate. Now he's a computer expert in Australia. Yeah, he's unmuted now. Thanks for that. Uh, actually, yeah. I really appreciate your contribution. One thing is, uh, so we are talking about distant education. Uh, I mentioned in my comments also, in Australia, even before the COVID uh, outbreak, uh, most uh, rural areas, you know, Australia is a huge country. They had to rely on uh, distant education. Perhaps uh, Mr. Jagat Vikram Singh can learn from Australian experience uh, uh, related to uh, distant education. At the same time, I have suggestions. If you can collate all the comments, everybody can benefit. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we'll be doing that. I mean, uh, yeah. once this is uh, this webinar is over, we'll uh, convert this to a brief report, and uh, the video is also That's available good. at YouTube. So uh, yeah. all these electronic as well as verbal reports will be available, and we'll submit to authorities as well. Mm -hmm. So that that will definitely happen because it's a very valuable amount of information that we are discussing. Can we uh, limit other comments? Now we are actually coming close to the coming close to the end of this webinar. If you can have very brief comments from those who want to make. Uh, Mr. Neil Gunadasa should be uh, uh, oh. unmuted now. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Mr. Neil. Neil, are you with us? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. Yes. Can you hear me, please? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam, and thank you the uh, thank you uh, the, uh, the the team that you have uh, uh, given me the opportunity. Yeah, uh, inviting me, and uh, I think uh, um, when coming back to the uh, e-learning part, this is a good opportunity to think of the digital education in the country. Because uh, we have done let, uh, several type of uh, innovation and experiences and practices last 10-15 uh, years uh, uh, you provide in the devices, provide in the connectivity. But this time we noticed that uh, those practices are not that much of uh, impacted uh, due to various reasons. So therefore, I think uh, as a country, we need to have a, mechan a proper mechanism okay. in order to uh, deliver the uh, digital education. So mainly, uh, as uh, Dr. Sujata also mentioned here, so some people, some students, they have TV, they have mobile phones, uh, devices. But on the other hand, some they don't have. So therefore, uh, we need to think of all the students and we need to read the unreachables. So mostly what is happening, we are always trying to read the reachables. So we need to think of the unreachables and also uh, the government and the TRC, uh, they have to come with proper plan to provide the connectivity, uh, mainly for the schools and the education teachers and the students uh, with the uh, low cost. 
and also the we need to have some sort of uh, mechanism to replace the devices so we know in the school level we provide the computers but uh, i mean it takes a lot of time to uh, give the second batch so these these are the uh, the current situation that we are facing when you talk about the students level so the, during this covid period uh, all the professors all the sonors all teachers they have taken immense mechanisms new practices using whatsapp using zoom using uh, different type of video conferences uh, to go for the uh, students uh, uh, teaching and learning process continued so but still uh, we uh, need to understand when it comes to the formal mechanism formal way we need to formalize all these deliverables and also we want to make sure that all the uh, learning and teaching and learning process should be formalized to the digital education so we have now practiced something we have now uh, taken uh, we have taken a lot of efforts but we may need to formalize these things and we will we need to think of what type of mechanism that we can implement it in the sri lankan education system in order to provide uh, all the students uh, the, the facilities uh, they they need to learn uh, in the general education system and uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for giving me the opportunity thanks thank you neil i think uh, yeah now uh, uh, shall we do a one last round of comments from everyone uh, any final message we'll get one by one from samudhyan say we'll uh, the resource persons one by one very briefly yes uh, basically what i'm trying to emphasize is uh, what we need to do is not just thinking how to deliver the same old curriculum that we have been delivering and this shaken up stage is a good opportunity to change change for a more holistic education where we look into not only the content but also uh, competencies character building and their uh, their wisdom so that change should be targeted if you do that we will be able to empower our society so that they can face another epidemic and they can face the ongoing epidemic as well as they can face another epidemic in future i'll repeat that in singhala also ape මේ වියසනේ වෙලා තියෙන අවස්ථාවේ අපට මේ අලු ගසා දාලා නැගිටින්න නම් අපි මේකෙන් ඉදිරියට එන්න නම් අපි කල යුත්තේ අපේ මොකක් හරි ක්‍රමයක් යොදාගෙන අපේ පරණ කරිකියුලම් එක පරණ ගන්න ක්‍රම ඒවාම නැවත කෙසේ හෝ ගැනනවට වඩා අලුත් දේවල් අලුත් අලුත් දේවල් සොයා බලන එක අලුත් අලුත් දේවල් පර්යේෂණයන් කරන එක ඒ තුලින් නවතාවෙන් යුතුව අලුත් මුහුණුවරකින් අපේ අධ්‍යාපනය දියත් කරන එක ඒ සඳහා අපි विषाणुबद्ध कारण अमतरव लमेंगे कुशलतामेंगे आध्यात्म दीवन करमेदयान स्वया बलियुत अलुदेवाद अध्यापने संबंध पर्यशन वाल अपे अलुदेवाल हरिद किल बल एविडेंस बेस्ड एडुकेशन क्रम अभी अणुगत स्तुति डिजिटलोद विश्वास अभी नॉन फॉर्मल एजुकेशन अभी टीवी एक बार विच करा तो ऑनलाइन पास विच करा इट बिकम्स वेरी मच नॉन फॉर्मल दे वही तात्ते तुले मामा हितना वाला निवेश के न एक के बालवास करना आलू क्रमवेदिया गैन अभी हितान नहीं हुआ मगर अभी दें मेलांगे दी यूनिसेफ के आधार ऐसे हुए तवत संगठन डेवलपमेंट पा� printed workbooks tika grade 1 grade 2 lamai siluma denata lankawi me sathiye hambeno me me sathiye wenakota eka yawala thiyena amathyanse ite eka karethn 
අර දුප්පත්මලමයි මාජිනල් ඉස්ලාමයි ඒක මොකද කරන්නේ කියන එක පිළිබඳ තියෙන තද බල ප්‍රශ්නය නිසා අපි මේ කොච්චර කතා කරත් ඩිජිටල් ඩිවයිඩර්ස් එක්ක අද අපි කියන මේ රාජ්‍ය අධ්‍යාපනයේ වරප්‍රසාද වල පන්තිය තමයි වැඩිම භුක්ති විඳින්නේ මේ තත්ත්වේ මග හැරෙන ක්‍රමවේදයක් ගැන අපි හිතන්න ඕනේ මම හිතනවා මේ කොවිඩ් වසන් වසංගතය අපිට හොඳ අවස්ථාවක් මේ හැම දෙයක් ගැනම හිතන්න we need to think fresh and act with new weapons ඒ තමයි හිතන්නේ අපි ඔක්කොම එකට එකතු වෙලා කතා කරන දෙයින් i think we all learn a lot and i really enjoyed the uh, dialogues thank you thank you uh, then uh, shall we move to other resource persons if we can comment very briefly uh, hello yes yeah, yeah dr sujata can you yeah right i i'll say questions. the short term and the long term the short term i think Uh, we need to remember that textbooks are available for grade 6 to 11 and uh, ministry is already uh, the primary you don't have textbooks but they have distributed study packs it's good if the other three grades are also given study packs and i think 100% have mail 100% have textbooks and 96% have a mobile phone i think any design any any inter- the teacher should be instructed they should do any kind of planning based on these children then the others can on top of that they can get whatever so our lesson plans for distance education should be based on these facilities children with these facilities and they are they have to be very parsimonious then you think about lean and smart education so i think it's an opportunity to change the teaching now so if you focus on the children without facilities in the long term i can't emphasize enough we can talk about student centered learning it is just a fancy phrase unless we change the exam system because without the change the exam teachers are constricted they cannot do anything they have to teach the exam so in the long term i think uh, we need to use this moment to do that dialogue and bring those changes and they are not difficult they have been proposed and they are all on record by nec documents all that we need to push that um so uh, i think for distance education being inclusive start with the people who are marginalized then you will your brain will begin to tell you new things and uh, then the others can uh, top up thank you dr sujata uh, i think uh, we had had a really good discussion where we discuss uh, the uh, possible ways of controlling this epidemic and the transmission and the challenges that we are facing at the school level with a large number of students coming in and uh, then the need to adhere to the basic measures i think as a president of the sri lanka medical association i would like to highlight that fact that many countries who have succeeded or successfully controlled this epidemic that including countries like singapore australia hong kong they have basically gone for the basics the basics of the public health like the hand, the hand hygiene the sanitation maintaining the physical distancing those were the basics and sri lanka also managed to successfully control up to this point i mean even though there are some clusters that the patients are appearing in large numbers still it hasn't gone into the community so we we need to prevent the disease or the epidemic going into the community the successful measures followed by other countries are not not high technology and not the unproven methods that the, but the basic public health measures have proven to be successful so my request from all the authorities is to follow the basic public health measures to the extent possible within the practical realities otherwise we may be spending the money unnecessary or the limited resource that we have on unproven methods the simple basics are the most effective in controlling this epidemic the simple basics like hand hygiene and maintaining the distance but even that to what extent we can maintain in our settings is challenge so that is a challenge where the education sector and the health sector will be facing so let's think together and work and work adequately with proper coordination because those are challenges and similarly we highlighted the need of co- need for coordination the coordination between the health sector education sector and maybe the media so all these are very important So finally thank you everyone for this very important discussion and we will be try to make use of this important message that came up 
and I will be highlighting, we will be summarizing the information and distributing with all the decision makers. And hopefully together, we should be able to make a positive impact. Thank you and have a great day.